A lighthouse is on an island 350 meters offshore. The lighthouse beam makes a full turn every five seconds. How rapidly is the point where the beam meets the shoreline moving along the shoreline when the beam meets the shoreline at a point 1400 meters from the lighthouse? I think the most difficult aspect of this problem is actually visualizing what's going on. So let's start by drawing a diagram to see if we can't see how all of the pieces are fitting together. We're going to start with a lighthouse and this lighthouse is sitting 350 meters offshore. So I'm going to draw a lighthouse and the lighthouse is sitting on an island 350 meters offshore. Now the thing about this 350 meters is it's a constant. It's not changing. So I'm going to label that 350 meters because it's going to stay the same all the time. Now what do lighthouses do? Well, they turn, they send a beacon of light, and they do so in a fashion that goes 360 degrees. So that light is going to be turning, and let's say in a counterclockwise fashion, and as it does, it projects down, it projects a light out, and at some point, that light is going to be reaching the shoreline. And once it hits that shoreline, it hits at a point. So what's being asked is, how rapidly is this point moving along the shoreline? So we're asking, how fast is that moving along the shoreline? Because as the light turns, that point will get closer and closer and closer to the straight distance that I have labeled 350, right? There are a couple things that we can notice by just doing this idea right here. The first of which is, I don't know if you see, but there's a right triangle idea going on right here. There's a right triangle going on. And combined with that right triangle are some things that are changing. Specifically, this distance along the shoreline right here is changing. And the angle as the light rotates around the lighthouse, that angle is also changing. So that sets up a really nice picture for us. We're going to use some trigonometry, I think, when we go about solving it. But before we do that, let's now write down what we know and what we're trying to solve. So we are looking for, specifically, we are looking for how rapidly is this point traveling. And a way to represent that in our problem is how rapidly is this distance x changing? So we are going to be looking for and solving for dx dt. That's our unknown. And we are specifically looking for this when the beam meets the shoreline at a point 1400 meters from the lighthouse. In other words, when the hypotenuse, do you see this hypotenuse right here? I'll call it z. But that hypotenuse right there, that is the 1400 meters that they're referring to. So we're specifically looking for dx dt when the z distance in our diagram equals 1400 meters. Is there anything else that we know that we haven't addressed yet? One more item, and that is the lighthouse beam makes a full turn every five seconds. In order to go all the way around the lighthouse, all the way around, it takes five seconds. But if we want to talk about going around or making a full rotation, we can say that that's equivalent to the angle 2 pi. So really, that light beam is turning at a rate of 2 pi over 5 seconds, or 2 fifths pi seconds, excuse me, 2 fifths pi radians per second.
And what does that represent? That represents how the light is changing. And so can we put a variable onto it? Absolutely. That's our angle change, right? D theta dt. How is that angle changing? How quickly is that angle moving? And that's 2 fifths pi or 2 pi over 5 radians per second. We now have all of our information written down, gathered together, and we're ready to begin. We want to write an equation or a formula that relates multiple variables, specifically the variables that are being incorporated in the rates. Let me say that again. We want to write down a formula or an equation that relates the two rates, dx dt and d theta dt. So I want to write an equation or formula that relates the x and the theta. And can you see one from our, from our picture? Well, there's quite a few, but one that I think sticks out to me is tangent. So katoa, remember that whole tangent is opposite over adjacent. So I could say that for this particular picture, the tangent of theta is opposite x over hypotenuse, excuse me, over adjacent, 350. So the tangent of theta is x over 350, opposite over adjacent. This equation, this formula relates theta and x. And we're now ready to take the derivative with respect to time. So let's take the derivative on the left side of tangent theta with respect to time. And let's take the derivative on the right side of x over 350 with respect to time. Now the left side is short and sweet. Derivative of tangent is just secant squared. So we have the derivative of secant squared theta times d theta dt equals, and what about that right side? Well notice x is just a linear factor, right? And so we just have to pull off our coefficient. So the derivative of x over 350 is just 1 over 350 followed by dx dt. I'll write that out. x over 350 can also be viewed as 1 over 350 times x. And so now you see that linear factor 1 right next to the 1 over 350. So when I take the derivative with respect to time, I simply get 1 over 350 dx dt. Let's go back to our problem. What was it that we were trying to solve for? In our problem, we were trying to solve for dx dt. That's what our unknown is. And I have it, it's right here. I just need to substitute in for all the other pieces that are missing right now. Well, I know what d theta dt is. d theta dt is 2 pi over 5. So there's only one piece that remains missing, and that is the secant squared of theta. Now we don't know anything about theta, but there is a little bit of information we haven't used yet, and that's that 1400 meters. So let me put a little picture over here. So I have this triangle, and this leg right here is always 350 meters, and we're given at a specific moment that the hypotenuse of this right triangle is 1400 meters. Theta is the angle right here between those two sides. And what are we looking for at that moment? We're actually looking for secant squared theta, or specifically, secant theta, and then square it, right? That's what we're trying to find. 
Well, in this situation, can you not use this right triangle and first tell me what the cosine of theta is? The cosine, remember, so ka toa. It's ka, c. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And so the cosine is 350 over 1400. But remember, secant is just the reciprocal of cosine. And so I just have to flip the cosine and put hypotenuse over adjacent. And so that means that the secant of theta is 1400 over 350. And that whole quantity is being squared. And actually, 1400 over 350 reduces down one more step because 350 actually goes evenly into 1400. And so 1400 divided by 350 is 7. And so that means that secant squared at this particular moment is just 7 squared or 49. So I'll simply put 49 right here in place of secant squared. I'm almost finished. That last step is all about algebra. So to solve for dx dt, we want to put everything together on the left side, which is going to be 49 times 2, or 98 pi over 5. And that's our left side. On the right side, I have 1 over 350 dx dt. My final step to solve for dx dt is to multiply both sides of my equation by the reciprocal. So I'm going to multiply by 350 on the right and 350 on the left. And when I do that on the left, that gives me 70 times 98 pi equals just dx dt. So the rate of change of x with respect to time is 6,000, 6,860 pi meters per second. Now that one took a lot of thinking, but I hope all the steps were clear. Don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions at all. Good luck with this one.